And let me throw this one to you first is what does somebody need to do if you're in upper management and you're looking down and you just see a lot of busy work and a lot of people working their tails off, trying to keep up with all these different spreadsheets to keep your company compliant, keep things moving, keep your supply chain going. But you you can tell that they, they look at it and go, this isn't efficient. What would be the approach that you would have them to say is like, what are the questions they need to ask of their staff to get ready to say, and second, how do they go out to the industry to say, I need help? It isn't unusual for um, a cu- our customers to, ha- to be utilizing spreadsheets that are 150 columns wide. Now, imagine that you have a spreadsheet that's 150 columns wide because there's 150 columns worth of data that you have to manage for every single part. On a spreadsheet, you're not going to be able to know who did what in what thing. Did you have a keystroke mistake? Um, and then you have to be able to share that with your, your import broker, perhaps. And so you have spreadsheets crapping out. You have emailing back and forth. You have entries that have the wrong information that you're trying to figure out why that was and so on. And, and this just isn't a workable solution long term. You know, we have a line that um, has stuck here at Third Wave, and it's now sort of on much of our marketing material that Third Wave is freaking control for control freaks, right? Because we all know that trade compliance people are control freaks, and so they have to be. Um, that's the first step in virtually everything that you're going to do from a trade compliance perspective is control your data or your master data, and and this is when it's time to sort of just say to yourself, hey, listen, I think we need to gain control of it. And if, you know, if, if we're lucky enough that you want to give me a call or third wave, somebody here at Third Wave, then great. But you want to give somebody a call that will help you on this task. And, and as I said, you know, the, the complexity with PGAs is oftentimes way more complicated than it is with, and Josh, um, with uh, I was customs gonna, information. I was going to ask Josh a question about um, with... Um, your solution, and of course, uh, you, you said you've been with uh, Third Way for 17 years, and I mean, obviously, I, everything has evolved a lot. But um, what about any of the new, like managing this data and and doing something with data and making that work a lot easier for people? Um, have you all, or have you, or what do you think? I guess it's, it's not really a general question about if you have done it, but in the industry, how do you see AI? Uh, working its way into this and and being able to a lot easier manage this could make sense right for operators for decision makers and so um, AI provides uh, you know short term an opportunity to um, a make that data available and then b if the data has been contextualized um, you know pro- provide a layer um, that can potentially look at it. Um, given the context and, um, you know, provide, provide answers, uh, as, the, as things go. Today's world, it used to be, let, let me get, here's where I'm going with it is like, is it should be much easier in today's world and environment to import data files, whether they're spreadsheet, whether they're the different formats of, uh, data files into a system that can now be, utilize that and organize and utilize that data effectively than what it used to be. Because it used to be the scenario you could get spreadsheets in, you could get a data file in in different formats. But then there was this big uh, challenge to data map, if you will, or, or, or map the file, the data elements in the file to whatever else. And that took time and that used up a lot of IT resources, which is okay. There's still maybe some of that, but it is, there's a lot of that that is somewhat mo- much more user friendly in today's world. When it comes to data mapping, I mean, the problem is data, you know, AI in, in many ways needs uh, good training sets, right? In order to be able to uh, make sense of things. And so um, there still needs to be sort of organized data where things can be trained in order to, to make uh, these kind of things happen. And so, um, you know, for us, when, when we look at data, it's just amazing when, we, when we're doing an implementation, the way data can get represented is just so varied. Um, you know, and so if you look at something like, like an invoice, 
Yeah, an invoice is relatively standard, and yet there are you know there's there's dozens of companies now that are designed to help you take take you know PDF invoices and digitize them and try and put those data elements into the right slots of what they are, right? But there's just so much nuance in you know on the margin, and sometimes that that margin matters, and sometimes it it doesn't. Um, when you look at the PGA data, there, there's, or, you know, or, or customs data, there, there's just so many ways it can be represented. And typically, this is not data that's coming from a controlled system. It's, as Grant mentioned, or we talked about, it's a lot often kept on one or more sheets in a spreadsheet or multiple spreadsheets. Um, you know, we have companies where they have large organizations where they're trying to consolidate maybe across 10 or 20 different uh, departments or companies that have all maintained things differently. And so, if you really want control where where this field means something within your system, um, you know you have to make sure that the data that's going in is 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 sort of right, right? And uh, you know there's there's normalization, denormalization. There's the ways the ways the data gets represented. It's it's still a process, um, and that's that's uh, you know. Here here here's here's a problem, Andy. Here here's here's a problem or a way to think about it. So imagine AI is something like a, a, a black box, right? You can, any, I, I talk about this a lot because lots of people say AI, like, will AI solve this? What, or AI will solve this, right? And, and basically what they're doing is they're taking, you know, Josh called it pixie dust, which I, I love, is like sort of like a magic wand, like, bring, and all of a sudden, like, magic happens and something has transformed from one thing to another, whatever that happens to be. And, and it's like magic. And it's like, it, like you would look at that and you'd say, wow, that's like, that's like totally amazing. But here's the problem with trade compliance is in trade compliance, everything has to be explicit, right? So if a product has a certain HTS code, it sort of matters why it was the product and then matters why it's an HTS code and then matters how you got there. And then it matters when the person classified it and then it matters on the date and that the valid the validity dates of those of that classification might change at some point in time and so on and so on. like all of this stuff needs to be explicit and then when a product comes in on a commercial invoice and now it needs to be translated into an into a, a customs entry that needs to be explicit okay none of this is sort of like bring magic black box stuff right it's all explicit and so what Josh is really saying is like on the margins, AI can do pretty amazing things. But when it comes to fundamental trade compliance activities, having magic isn't helpful. What would you recommend to our listeners here to say, what do they need to do as far as next steps before they can bring somebody in to say, should we consider this or look at their software or whatever? So whatever challenges you have today as it relates to spreadsheets, it's getting worse, right? And and as an executive, you need to acknowledge that your trade compliance people are stressed and underwater and they need, they need help. Um, and once you get there, it's not like the solutions are, are necessarily particularly crazy expensive. You just have to get there to understand that their time is valuable. The people are valuable. And, um, they are doing very, very, they, one thing that we can all agree on, I mean, we're at ICP all the time is these are some of the best people that care more than anybody else about keeping your company out of the, out of trouble. And you need to give them the support they need to do the job to keep you out of trouble. That's what, that's what they need. They don't need a lot of support. They just need a little bit. Um, and so if you can get there, then you can solve the problem and you know if, if third wave happens to be a company that you want to call then get in touch with me i'd love to hear from you